Watch Dalton then back. Puts it through for Hawthorne's first goal. Oh, what a goal! Oh. Put it high, the wind did the rest. Deep here to Menico, he's sad. Deep here to Menico. Played a good first quarter. Gets it down to Handley. From the boundary line, a great shot at goal. Uh, really showing a bit of form since we've seen him play about halfway through the season, Peter. Yes, he's a, a good tagger. There's the kick by Handley, right across the face of goal. Oh, he's put it no. through! The goal. Oh, what a magnificent goal by Handley. Great player spot. And one of the best Kevin passages the of round, play for the day the resulted the in this goal to Hawthorne. Buccanara at the Dunstall, Dunstall on to Matthews. Matthews did, he's Lisa Lee for 10 metres out, scores a goal! Hawthorne were looking Dunstall good at this stage, up. they got their fourth. Well, on the back could have been a free kick to Footscray's uh, Jimmy Sewell. The umpire says no. In goes Handley off the ground. Goal! Handley's got it. Seven Start of the league. second quarter now. Footscray kicking with the breeze and they started well. Three points as we go into the second quarter. Steve McPherson loses that one out but it's picked up by Malin. Malin's kick is a long one down towards Bandit and Bandit takes the mark in front of Schwab and well within kicking distance. He's got the new ball and he's only about 20 metres out directly in front so he should be able to score Footscray's first goal inside the minute mark of the second quarter. First kick for Bandit. Should result in a goal. It has. It's a goal. First goal to the Bulldogs. Here they so come. Footscray coming back quarter. early in the second term well, and then one of the Russell controversial Green. free kicks of the day Man. against Russell, Russell Green. Green. Now was that a throw? He he the umpire it. says yes and, and plays the free kick to McPherson directly in front of goal. Rod McPherson from only about 20 metres out and he put it through for Footscray second. Footscray making the most of the breeze early in the second quarter. Hawthorne actually failed to score in the second term, kicking to the Geelong Road end. Market comes down. It's Rod McPherson, McPherson again. Pass to his brother at Steve. Over it goes again. Royal showing a lot of pace. Gets away from me. The left foot snapped. Great mark here the in the goal square to Beasley. Beasley got the mark. That was a great bit of play on the part of Beasley. And maneuvered uh, mute completely. Goal number 90 for the year for Simon Beasley. And we're just over the four and a half minute mark of this uh, second quarter. There it is. So Footscray back in business now. Ball high. Into the third the quarter goal. now. Wallace. And Hawthorne's only goal Wallace. after half time. Lovers to Buccanara. And turn to Handley. Handley from half forward. He's gone for a pass. And that's a ripper. Dunstall mark number one for the day. But goal that little Lovers has done a marvellous job here today, Pete. Yes, Nearly gets the ball away from the pack. Hawthorne's best player in my book. Well, he's one of the best players on the ground. He's be pressing, uh, pressing uh, Vlad Hardy for sure. Dunstall with his first kick for the day. I don't think he'll score from there. He's too far out. About 45 metres with a heavy ball. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh, he's put it through. Made a liar of me that time. Great kick by Dunstall. And a valuable goal for Hawthorne. Still in the third quarter. Footscray kicking to the Geelong Road end. Bad disposal by Wallace. Let's Footscray in. And the Bulldogs score the only goal at the Geelong Road end of the ground for the afternoon. There it is on a three. The fourth for the matchup, but into the ground. Well, they had to get one soon. They've been attacking for 15 minutes at the 22. For the first three quarters at the Western Oval, and we'll be back with the exciting final quarter after this. Gemini. The Homestead catalogue has everything you need at just the right price. It's even full of good advice. Homestead. Product, the right price and good advice. Anyone can create a product. But it takes an ingenious and dedicated people to take that product and develop it to its ultimate. NEC Computers, the power of Japan. Four points the difference at three quarter time and Footscray had the breeze in the final quarter and let's go back now to the Western Oval. A kick in at the start and there was only a kick in it at the finish. At the Western Oval, umpire Glenn James. 
coming in to start proceedings. The Bulldogs only trailing by four points and kicking with the breeze. Cursed and Malin, here they go. Up towards left half forward flank. Hawthorne haven't scored a goal at the other end of the ground. In fact, they haven't scored at it's that end of the ground. Nice old throw or whatever. He's played a push in the back first. You mentioned Purser, of course. Uh, He's Hawthorne been brilliant. been in trouble all day. Burn off the ground. They haven't got a ruckman to compete against him, Pete. A hard jump. Up to Beasley! Oh, he didn't pay it! Oh, goodness me, what are you going to do on a day like this? Well, they've been consistent with those all day, and that's been their uh, pattern of umpiring. Let's have a look at the mark. Oh, my God, it was pretty close to one, but I don't think he held it long enough. You see the umpire didn't think so. Langford, caught by Gronawigan. Bamford, caught by Green, taken by Wallace. Wallace's kick out of bounds on the fall, so things falling into place nicely. Thank you for Footscray. Well, this Footscray crowd are really uh, getting behind their uh, team at the moment. Hawthorne defence ragged as Hawkins takes the kick. And the mark taken out there at half forward by Gronawigan. He's still on the bench. That's three kicking with the breeze. He's gone long up towards full forward. Off the hands of the pack, it's out of bounds. And it will be a boundary throw in Footscray's left forward pocket. Well, they've got Langford in the ruck. That's how desperate they are for ruckman. Pete well, obviously, Hawthorne. Michael Byrne must be injured. Beasley and Langford. Yes, and they've also used Kennedy. Neither is uh, much taller than about six feet. Out to Wallace. Oh, lovely smother. Too slow to get the kick in on that occasion. Terry Wallace picked up by Bahaja. Bahaja's well shepherded. Plenty of time to run in and score. Won't quite be a, uh, be a score for Footscray. In fact, it hustled once again over the boundary line. And a boundary throw in. Left forward pocket once again for Footscray. Beasley and Langford. One by Beasley, out it comes to Russell Green. Green's kick is a high one, he's kicked it straight to Hawkins and he says thanks very much. Hawkins in left half forward, in one of the heaviest spots of the ground. Trying to find Beasley, knocked down by Mew. Langford to Luffridge, who's been Hawthorne's best player. This is Royal. Schwab in the back pocket. He looks for a hand pass. If he gets clear, he does so. No, he's decided to go for the kick. At the back, Purser, too tall for Bacanara. And he, along with Brad Hardy, the best two on the ground. Up to Beasley, knocked away. Picked up by Chris Mew and by Lester Smith. And the mark taken for Hawthorne by Russo. And it's Russo down there in the back pocket. Four points, the difference. Just off the three-minute mark of this uh, last quarter. Short pass. That's dangerous down there as Mew runs into a bit of trouble. Over it goes to Green, he ducks the head, he goes for hand pass. He's put Russo under pressure, he's grabbed, they deserve to lose that, they were messing about. Wallace gets the ball, it's kicked back there by Hanley. Back to, oh, that's a bad hand pass by Kennedy. He meant to find Loveridge, but picked up by Wallace, has given them a chance to go back into attack deeply. He doesn't know where to go, he's down. Oh, he's up and he might have got it too high against him. Russo's kick is out wide. Coming out to meet it now is Cyril Carroll on the ground. Looks as though Browden could be off. Simply can't pick. Uh, no, Browden's still out there. The ball back again. Tucks him as the ball. He goes down. He won't let anybody else get it. Now he's lost it. The umpire will ball it up out there on the centre wing position. Just over the four minute mark of this last quarter. Remember there's only been one goal scored for the match at the end that uh, Hawthorne are kicking to in this last uh, quarter. Bursa doing a great job. Couldn't get clear that time. Kennedy's grabbed it. The umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to the big fellow. Made out the best big man on the ground by a mile. Dunstall might be off there, I think. I think Dunstall's off the ground. Kicked high out wide. Coming in to meet it is Bahaja. He's got this one on his chest on his own out there at half four. But a good distance out from goal. About 75 metres out. Bahaja has spent a lot of time on the bench today. With the half four Edmonds. Can't complete the mark. They're hard to grab over here this afternoon. 
by Rowan Sauls has decided to warm it up in which race in a half forward position. Five minutes gone in the final turn. Actually, you mentioned no uh, Hawthorne goal there. They actually haven't scored from that end of the ground loop. I said there's only been one goal at the point of their foot by the Hawkins keep it That's right, yes, in that third quarter. So still it's in the half forward for Footscray and once more a ball up. Mayland handing it back to Rowan Soares. Ron Wigan knocks it down, can't find a Footscray player. Socket off the ground by Handley, up towards Curran. It slews up the side of the boot, out towards DP Domenico. He's just about got the mark. The umpires have been consistent in playing those this afternoon. Hardy looking for a free kick, grab too high. Lead towards the boundary line, still in play. Now it's uh, over the line now in the middle of the interchange area. And it will be a boundary throw in pretty well on the centre wing position. Well, this is one of the most desperate games we've seen for a long time. Let's see that uh, in replay. That was certainly a free kick right over the shoulder, wasn't it? But the umpire didn't play that. You can't see them all. Right, so. Knocks it further forward for Bacanara. Off the ground. Curran again. Out wide. The left half forward flank for Hawthorne. And let's set a wing to be more precise. Russell Morris should get there first for the Hawks. He does. He's a good long kick, this fellow. Decides to go for the pass to Curran. And Curran marks in front of Brian Cordy, but a long way from goal. Possibly too far to score. Gone for a pass. Brereton has had a dirty day. Oops. Out of bounds. Boundary throw in. Almost in Hawthorne's left forward pocket. Six and a half minutes gone. Brereton on screen is having the four kicks for the day. Kennedy and Purser. Knocked down actually, I think, by Curran on that occasion. He picks it up. Gets it over to Matthews. Matthews with the right foot. Snaps. Puts it through for one point. And he's kicked one four. Uh, Barney, and that's uh, Hawthorne's first score at that end of the ground. Lewis came up at the seven-minute mark of the final quarter. And the difference is five uh, points, a short pass coming out here wide. It's grabbed here now by Callot. Callot's kick is wide out towards that half-back line. Daniels are oh, beaten that time, that time by Hawkins. Uh, Deep Pieta Manico. It's short, a chance now for Sewell to pick it up out there. It's on its ground, a Wigan. He's grabbed that time by Morris, gets a hand pass out to Daniels. It's smothered, they throw themselves at seed going out. And out it comes down to McPherson. Tap back, oh, Russo overruns it. Kicked off the ground by Evan to Bahaja. Beasley over it there, Bahaja, he goes down. The umpire said play, it's kicked off the ground. Actually, it came up a player's body that time and threw for one point. So it's still four points the difference. Not the most stylish football in the world, but by golly, is this a pressure game? I don't think I've seen a more desperate game for a long time. We see a short uh, pass coming out there to Langford to take the mark in the back pocket position. Just on the eight-minute mark, a short pass there to uh, Lester Smith. He kicks it long. In front is Curran. Punched away that time. Again by Footscray. Grabbed by Wallace. A hand pass comes back now to Brian Cordy. It's a high kick. Ah, oh, great mark to Steve McBurst. That was a magnificent mark. Brilliant. And saw uh, Morris there anticipating, uh, just lying back to take an easy one. He stepped in front of him. And that's a great mark, and he could easily kick a goal from he's about 45 metres out directly in front of that ball. Mighty heavy. There she is on its way. And that's a tremendous kick, it's a goal. And the Bulldogs have hit the front for the first time for the game. So it's five goals, 8.38, foot way to Hawthorne, 5.7.37. University tests prove the new Hoover Turbo Power picks up over two and a half times more dirt than its major competitor. Oh, there, there. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. These would look nice. And Clark Kent, perhaps. <laughs> Try these. Excuse me. Mm. Very uh, modern. Mm. Yeah. Or uh, Christian Dior. All kinds of people rely on Coles and Garrard. Perhaps. Mm. Nope. Too stuffy. But they're not. That's why every Coles and Garrard branch has over 1,000 different frames. Heavenly. Is he Mr. Coles or Mr. Garrard? More, more, more! Ford, we give you more! Now, with more big factory bonuses from Ford, your Ford dealer can give you even more when you pick up an ace deal on current model Laser, Meteor, Telstar and TX5. With new models waiting on the sidelines, you'd better hurry. Get an ace deal on Laser, Meteor, Telstar and TX5. See your Ford dealer now. Ford, we give you more. Puts by a point at the nine minute mark of the final quarter. Wallace. 
Steve McPherson again. Up to Royal. Russo beats him to it. Chance for Langford. Well, no, not Langford. But uh, Hawthorne go forward through Michael Tucky. Gets bundled out. The whistle has gone and it will be a ball up at centre field. Nine and a half minutes into the final quarter. Langford and Purser. Knocked out actually by Russo. Handley and Wallace actually battling each other forward. In goes Steve Wallace for foot spray. Picked up by Brian Royal. Royal out towards the right half forward flank. Edmund should have taken the mark in front of Lester Smith. Free Gets kick. interfered with. He'll get a free kick. Foot spray skipper a long way from goal though. He sprayed them a bit today too in shooting for goal. He won't score from there. Kick dropping short. Loveridge should have taken the mark. They all look easy from up here. Beasley gets it out to Bahaja. Bahaja breaks the tackle well. Gets it back to Malin. He's in trouble. A hurried hand pass knocked down by McPherson. Picked up by Bahaja again in towards the full forward pocket. Off the hands of uh, Russell Morris and Gronowick. And it's out of bounds. And it will be a boundary throw in right forward pocket for Footscray. Ten and a half minutes got in the quarter. It's going to be Beasley. Hit Langford on the head. The ball, not Beasley, but Langford's got a free kick. I don't know what that was for. Langford from left back pocket. Trying to find Russo. Over the top of his opponent. Out to Kennedy. Kennedy with the left foot, very close to the boundary line. Will it be in play? It's over the line now, and it will be a boundary throw-in on the centre wing position underneath the Footscray coaches box. Just on the 11-minute mark of this last quarter, Footscray in front by two points, and they've trailed all day. But uh, let's see what they can hang on to it. The ball back into play from that centre wing position. Knocked out by Person. He's done that all day beautifully. A hand pass comes out, not a good one. Still plenty of fumbling. Lovebridge goes down. The umpire will ball it up. Still out there on the centre wing position. There's only been one goal scored at the end that Hawthorne are kicking to for the match. That was kicked by Footscray's Hawkins in the third quarter, so it's going to be a mighty hard job for Hawthorne to score a goal. Still the ball coming back now, a chance for Russo to send them deep into attack. It's down towards the forward pocket. Matthews comes out, he spins out of the pack, goes for hand pass. Over to Wassel. Russ, uh, Wallace, I should say. The ball up the bucket. and Harry, oh, he couldn't hold them up. Hardy goes down, the umpire called play on. Kicked off the ground by Gallup. At least it gets it away from the danger zone for Footscray, and the ball is out of bounds. Well, oh, nearly a mark that time to Matthews. Ball out of bounds about... Uh, 65 metres around from the Hawthorne goal, which would appear to be about 70 miles to them today, the way they've scored goals now, scored goals down there, or even scored down that end of the ground. Wallace trying to come out of the pack, and the umpire will ball it up. We're just over the 12-minute mark of this last quarter. Still Footscray in front by two points. Down goes uh, Russo trying to get through the pack again. The umpire will ball it up once more. Balling up has certainly been the order of the day, but the conditions are shocking. Very heavy conditions. Chance now the ball pushed on. Back it comes now to Hanley. Hanley's kick is a hurried one, but there he is. Hardy takes the mark. He's had about uh, 24 possessions. Goes from short out there, but it's a good uh, pass out there to Kellett. Kellett goes for the short pass. It's picked up by Wallace. Another short pass. Oh, that's a bad one. We went to find uh, Hawkins. It was picked up by D.B. at a minute ago. Morris skids along the ground, gets a hand pass back to Wallace. He fumbles the ball. Kellett goes in there to help. Down goes Wallace. He's grabbed. A hand pass kicked. Well, actually kicked off the ground that time by Curran. Out to Bacanara. Picks it up cleanly, but his kick is smothered. Chance for Brown, and he's got it. He's got the mark. Kicks have been scarce for Dermot Brown today. I think he's had five. He's gone for a short pass. Oh, he's put it out of bounds. Why did he go for the long kick? For heaven's sake. When the ball is so heavy, you don't mess about uh, going for short passes, particularly when you can't score that down that end of the ground. Hardy's got the ball now. The ball back there to watch that half-back flank position. Punched away that time by Langford. And by golly, is he giving away inches because he's competing against Person Ruck. That's our slide on the half for Ruckman, Hawthorne. If Michael Burns been on the bench most of the day, obviously would be injured. Purser again, this time suffering it off the ground up towards centre wing. Steve McPherson's there, fires out the hand pass, he finds Bandlett. Back up support from uh, Wallace. Bandlett again, now it's Wallace that suffers it off the ground, but Mr. Smith is in the road for Hawthorne. Mark is taken by Loveridge, or he dropped it. 
He's still got the ball anyway. That's the thing that counts. Loveridge to left half forward, short pass, trying to find Curran. Curran in front of Sewell and Kevitt. Back to DP and Domenico. Tries to break the tackle. Does so. Short pass in towards full forward. Puts Gray all the way. And there I think it's Ford. Ford in the back pocket. Giving plenty of directions down there from his teammates too. Pete where to kick it. He's gone out wide. Knocked away by Russo. Malin. Oh, gee, that ground's heavy over there. It's over the boundary line. Hawthorne's left half forward flank. Nearly 15 minutes into the quarter. Not the most scientific football today, but the match has been close. Knocked down by Kevin. Picked up by Wallace. He's knocked up getting kicks. He's certainly been on top in the centre for Hawthorne. It's four for Footscray. Long clearing kick around the boundary line. It rebounds to Morris. Now it's done, uh, it doesn't. It's socketed away by Ede. Ultimately, it's out of bounds on the centre wing. 15 minutes gone in the quarter. Footscray doing everything right at the moment. The Hawthorne still in with a chance. Only two points in it, but Footscray with the breeze, and the Hawks haven't scored a goal at the Geelong Road into the ground yet, anyway. Ronald Regan tried to get a kick, didn't get it very far. Let's see if Wallace can fare better. He can't. Tuck finally for Hawthorne, picks it up, gets it back to Terry Wallace. His kick was smothered. They can't get kicks. I think that was Handley. Handley up toward Ford, and Ford takes the mark in front of Matthews. That's three marks he's taken. He's had Matthews well covered the ball back up there on the offensive side. That's a good pass. Oh, an easy mark. Dropped by Sewell. He got one a bit higher. I think he'll get a free kick for that. Yes, he got the mark out there at half back. Still two points that if we approach the 16 minute mark. Punched away by Edmund. The ball hits the deck. Coming in to meet it now is Wallace. He got one too high on the shoulder, on the leg. The umpire by the knee, and the umpire will play the free kick for Wallace out there on that uh, centre wing position. Let's hope he kicks it a bit further from Hawthorne's point of view. The kick is over the half forward line. The seed coming out of the pack. He ran into Tuck. He had to have a hurried kick as a go for Kennedy. He's got the mark. He'd be about 45 metres. He's gone for a hand pass. Over to Tuck. It's a high one up towards the goal square. Kings Ford can't mark the ball, but he smothered it. Good play by Young Ford as he gets it out now. Langford skips the ball back. It's tapped on by Buccanara. Going after this Hawkins. Matthews got one in the back. He get a free kick. Oh, luck could be a fortune here for Hawthorne. Did he play for that one? I think he might have been pushed in the back, but he did exaggerate it a bit. A little bit of professionalism there. Well, watch this again in replay. He goes after. Oh, he might have did a bit of acting. A bit too smart that time for Hardy. So Matthews with the ball right there in the forward pocket going for goal number two. Of course, he's kicked four behind at this stage of the match. There she is on its way. He's not good enough. The pack fly. It's through. It could be through for one point. If you can find the ball there, you're a better man than I am. So the umpire will ball it up. Only about uh, a metre out from the Hawthorne goal. The pack fly. Kennedy. Oh, Browden tried to kick one through. Couldn't get it clear. The Footscray defenders forcing the ball through. And it's fun. now the umpire's going to ball it up again. So he's right on the edge of the, square, the, the mark there, the, the goal line mark. Push through for one point, so it's only a point the difference as we approach the seven and a half minute mark of this uh, last quarter. And what a game it's been, Pete. Not the most scientific football in the world, but a great entertaining game. Full of pressure, tough. Well, it's a grueling match, isn't it? It really is. Sewell. That's a good kick with the wet ball. Royal and uh, Luckridge. Daniels has played the entire game on that outer wing in front of Russo. In comes Morris for Hawthorne, gets it away from his opponent and plays it well. Morris chips it short down towards Hutt Ford. The, I think intended that for Schwab, but Schwab wasn't good enough to take the mark. It's out of bounds, and it will be a boundary throw in left half forward flank for Hawthorne at the 18-minute mark of the final quarter. One point the difference. Goal certainly hard to get today. Not surprising under these very wet and muddy conditions. Langford and Purser. Sewell tried to get there, couldn't do so. The two Wallaces are battling it out. None comes out with the ball, it's left to Loveridge, who's, uh, in my opinion, been Hawthorne's best player, and this player's the best in the ground. I don't know, I think Loveridge has pressed him pretty hard, Pete. He's played a great game with Loveridge. This fellow's been a fine player, too. Yes. Six marks and 25 possessions to Brad Hardy. So chew those over Lou. Daniels gave his opponent there a little bit of a nudge in the back, picked up beautifully by Royal, right on the boundary line. Well, just short of half forward. On for a pass. Now he's found for Harger. There's danger for Hawthorne. If he gets clear, and he has, he fires at goal. Will it get there? It's going close, but not close enough. And that behind makes the difference now. Two points. And that might uh, 
be a very handy point for Footscray. Footscray coaches box, Emmett Dunn, Wayne Walsh and Mickey Malthouse. Certainly not sitting down, are they, Pete? No. Uh, some light chairs over there. Bahaja missed the mark, so a little bit of fortune for Hawthorne. Langford along the boundary line. Intended that one for Russell Morris. Bronner Regan right there with him. Morris can't get clear. Schwab offloaded by Purser. And there will be a bounce on that outer flank. Hawthorne scored four goals in the first quarter. They've only scored one since. And we've still yet to score a goal at the Geelong Road end of the ground. In fact, they've only scored two points down there for the match, and one of those was rushed. And centre wing, knocked down by Langford. Tuck. Plenty of Footscray players are there against Brereton. DP at Medico tried to soccer it off the ground, couldn't do so. Lack of understanding there from Footscray. Yours partner and another of uh, them come out with the ball. Left the DP at Medico. Short kick down to half forward. Bacanara looks for a free kick. Hardy right there with him. <laughs> and up by Rowan Sauls has decided on a ball up at centre half forward for Hawthorne. Just over the 20 minute mark. This quarter on the go, about 27 minutes at the most. Two points the difference in favour of Hawth uh, Footscray. Still plenty of fumbling going on. That's Curran down there at the bottom of the pack. The umpire said it'll be another ball up still at the centre half forward position. Five goals, 8 38. Hawthorne to Footscray, 5 10 40. Still another ball up. Betting the umpire would pluck a free kick out of the next one. We get this uh, bit of a scramble straightened out. Marlins grabbed, he loses the ball. Still another ball up again. Now, this is not uh, the most exciting football now, but it has been a, a great game. And full marks to both sides because they've really gone in and given them utmost all the time. Well, length, uh, length have got one on the back of the head, and once more the umpire balls off. You've got to find a free kick here somewhere. Could have been a free kick to Langford from the back of the neck. Bursa trying to get out the pack. Tuck finally clears it out up towards Matthews and uh, Ford. There's a go for Buckanara. Can't pick it up. Umpire's paying a free kick here to Footscray. It'll be a free kick no doubt about that, but not too high. And the free kick to go to Foster down there in the back pocket position. He's done a fine job today on Brown. Kept him down to about five kicks. Kick by uh, Foster is out wide, looking out wide for Gordy, but he couldn't pick it up. It's Daniels fucking the ball, but he finally grabs it out wide down towards the wing position. Coming out the middle of his Gruner Wagon over runs the ball. It's tapped on again, and Morris goes after it. Uh, no one making much headway here, and there's a chance for Footscray. Now there's a push in the back for sure. <laughs> It'll go to Wallace, a hand pass back to Daniels. The ball driven long down towards the forward pocket. It'll beat them all. Beasley comes in the middle, but it's out of bounds. And now Footscray have got the chance to score because it's only about 30 metres around from their goal and they're two points in front. They're approaching the 22 minute, 22 and a half minute mark. And he now for the ball to come back into play. Beasley against Langford. And Langford got it down. Picked up by Royal, a snap at goal. There in the goal square is Mew. He plays it safe and taps it through for one point. So it's three points the difference. And there's no doubt about it, next goal will win for sure. That's providing that uh, Hawthorne, a uh, footscray, or footscray could easily hang on because they're doing a great job now. If we get a short pass out from you, he balks. Goes from the side to tap the ball on the ground and go for the kick at the back there as Carl got under that one. This allowed Brian Corder to take an easy mark down there, short of the uh, half four nine for uh, footscray. Hawthorne's lowest score for the year so far. Their previous lowest was against Collingwood. And they're also uh, under wet conditions, bandit. Out to Gronerwegan. Gronerwegan left forward pocket. Knocked through. In fact, it hit the post, actually. And so one point. Hawthorne needing a goal to win. They haven't scored one all day. Footscray by four points. So a desperation stage for the Hawks now. And the double chance has all but gone. All scores are counting now, Pete, aren't they? Yes, they are. In this very low-scoring match. Deed kicks in for Hawthorne. At the back is Tuck. Can't take the mark. Flung out to uh, Wallace from Russo. Up the centre field. And Footscray doing everything right. Mark Kevitt. Eighth mark to Kevitt. Nearly 24 minutes gone. About three minutes left for play. Knocked down by Langford. Hits it straight to Gronerwegan, who dropped it like a hot spot. If anything can be hot here this afternoon. Tuck can't get clear. Then James has decided it will be a ball up. 24 minutes gone. Just about siren time. And Footscray. The coach's box over there. Mickey Mulhouse getting on the phone. Real 
scramble. Well, out of the pack of Bandit. And also Russell Green. Once again, it's going to be a bounce, though, as we are 45 seconds from time off. Well, I reckon we've got about three and a half minutes to go at the most because it's been a very low-scoring quarter. Still a bit of a scrimmage developing there. It's about uh, 55 metres out from the uh, Footscray goal. Brereton off loop. Brereton off the ground. Byrne coming back on. It doesn't look as though his engine's been off most of the day. Tuck fumble that one. There's a chance to kick off the ground. It comes back in out of weed. He goes for a soccer job. A fumble. Swab goes for a hand pass. Back it goes down to Russo. Oh, he ducks the head. He's OK. Back to uh, Wallace again to the centre field. Burn on the ground. Picks up the ball. Can Hawthorne score a goal? Oh, that's a bad hand pass. What a shocker. Why didn't he go for a kick? I can't understand it. And the umpire will ball it up at centre field. Oh, they amuse me, these guys. The pressure's really on. They go for a hand pass like that. And that ball is like an eel. Knocked out by Purser, pushed on by Bahaja. Back it goes, knocked on by Grimberwick. He's got older than Morris that time, and the umpire spotted it. At 25 and a half minutes gone, that's a bad kick. He didn't even look no. where he was kicking that, that one that time, and the mark will take it here by, uh, by Malin. And they look as though they might have this game, Footscray, because they've really stood up to the strain in these last three quarters, and full marks of them as the ball goes over their half forward line. Beasley couldn't mark this. Again, Amma for McPherson. But he's up target, it'll bounce through for one point, so it's five points the difference. And if they get another point here, I'd say it's all over by the shouting as we approach the 26-minute mark. I reckon a minute and a half, possibly two minutes at the most to go, Pete. Yes, I agree with you on that. Waiting now for the ball to come back into play. Back there towards centre-half, back the plank by Grant Wiggle got grabbed a bit high. He falls on top of the ball, but this certainly suits Footscray. It's down there on their attacking zone, about 55, 60 metres out from their goal. And they're in front by five points. Up she goes. Knocked out by Tuck. It hits the deck. Royal tries to get clear. Another stack up here. And, of course, this is playing right into Hawthorne. Uh, Footscray's hands, Pete. 26 and a half minutes gone. 60 seconds left for play. Tuck doing battle. Lost out to Gronowigan. Picked up by Edmund. Footscray lead by five points. Bennett marks. It's play on. The court play on. Don't know why. He must have been touched off the boot. Doesn't worry Bam, but he's gone for a pass to Bahaja. In the full forward pocket. Green. High towards the other side. It's Footscray's ball game, gentlemen. Hawthorne out of the double chance. The Bulldogs, 5-13, 43. Hawthorne, 5-8, 38. Well, it was a, certainly a great win to uh, Footscray when you consider that they uh, gave... Uh, Hawthorne just on, well, I think four goals start in the first quarter, and it looked as though it could have been a bit of a one-horse race. But after quarter time, they played to Hawthorne at their own game, and they had many good players. They tackled just as hard as, if not harder than, uh, uh, than Hawthorne. They really gave Hawthorne a lesson of their own style of football. They tackled hard, they smothered, and a hang-on like they did that means that they are a football team worthy of the finals. There's no doubt about that. They had many good players. Only five points the difference, but... I would say since three-quarter time, they possibly should have won by a bit more. But there's the final scores. A great win to Footscray, and they've consolidated the position. Five goals, 13, 43, yeah, Footscray to Hawthorne. Five goals, 8, 38. You're watching Seven's Big League, part of the Nissan BFL Premiership season. Hawthorne leading at the first three changes, but they did fail to score a goal at the Geelong Road end of the ground. Footscray by five points, and that was Hawthorne's lowest score of the year, only 38 points. In the stats, Footscray on top in every department excepting the handballs. Hawthorne had 34 more. In the goals, singles to Footscray, Hawkins, Bandlett, Beasley, and the two McPherson brothers. And for Hawthorne, Handley finished up with two goals. After the match, I went to the Bulldog rooms and spoke to their coach Mickey Malthouse and defender Brad Hardy. Mickey, you're surprised that perhaps many commentators haven't given Footscray that much recognition uh, in so far as the finals are concerned. It seems to be Hawthorne, Carlton, Nissen and all the talk. Uh, I guess you've answered those now. Well, that's uh, their prerogative. I, I, look, I don't mind. I think uh, the further you keep it out of the line, there's less attention on you that you uh, can get away with a few things. But uh, probably justifiably so in Nissen and Hawthorne and Carlton's case, they are proven finalists and we've never been there for, for some time. I think there's only two blokes play finals football and that's Bahaja and Malin so maybe they're right but now we've got to uh, now we'll, we'll test them out see how correct they are I believe it's your birthday today 
Yeah. I'll admit to it now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that is, but uh, oh, it's fabulous to win that game. You uh, like playing in the mud. You knocked up getting kicked, so obviously the answer would be in the affirmative. Yes, I don't mind playing in the mud. Obviously, the ball's on the ground all the time, so uh, it suits little fellas like myself. And I think uh, if you have the right mental attitude and put yourself in for the ball, you'll get kicks. Well, you certainly got plenty today, Brad. It was a morale bursting win too, because Hawthorne were breathing right down your necks, weren't they? Certainly, uh, as you, you would know, Hawthorne and Carlton play next week, uh, so one of them must lose. So I think we've just about assured our place of in second spot, but uh, we're not going to let it rest here. Now we can go to next week to Collingwood, and then the following week at St Kilda, we'll take a one day, game at a time in preparation for the finals. Well done, Bulldogs, winning the match of the day today at a very wet and muddy Western Oval. You're watching Sevens Big League for round 20. We'll take it back, back uh, with more action in just a moment. Coming up, we remember Peter Criminals on Sevens Big League. These are the magnificent new Series 3 Bluebirds. They're packed with luxury features and a new, more efficient 2-litre engine. This month, you can drive home in a brand new Bluebird for just $10,990. Oh, we don't need these. That's because there's no extra costs. Your Nissan dealer is including all on-road costs. This is a once only price of $10,990 for the Bluebird GL 4 Speed. Come alive, come and drive, Nissan. For big sound out of a small package, this little national beats the heavyweights easily. You can take it with you anywhere. Victoria's national parks are like time capsules. They give us timeless beauty, tales of times long gone, a place to take time out or to have the time of your life. From the sweeping shores of Wilson's Promontory to the summits of our alpine parks, Victoria's national parks are our heritage. They are for all of us to enjoy and they are our gift to the future. Time to check the leading goal kickers now with two rounds of the Home and Away series still to be played and Simon Beasley still requires 10 for the tonne plus finals of course, he only got one today. Michael Roach didn't play. Bernie Quinlan, four goals for a season's tally of 75. Gary Ablett, five for 72. Brian Taylor got three for a season's tally of 71. And Tony Lockett today kicked one goal for a season's tally of 70. If you're having a punt on the footy this afternoon, Selection 9 and the Magpies, 585. Geelong, Selection 5, 390. Carlton, Selection 5, $4.05. North Melbourne, Selection 9, 765. Footscray, Selection 1, 665. And Destinland, Selection 15, $17.20. The footy double, Collingwood and Geelong, 9 and 5, $42.20. And the footy quad, you required Carlton, North, Footscray and Essendon, 2316, $1,266.75. And time now in Sevens Big League for NEC Fantastic Footy Flashbacks as we go up to our host, Sandy Roberts. He sees fantastic footy flashbacks. Well, over the weeks, in fact, over the months, we've had hundreds of letters for people writing in to see their favourite stars or favourite piece of play in action. And so many big names come to mind. Barassi, Farmer, Baldock, Hudson, Skilton, Coleman, and so the list goes on. But there's one name that also kept cropping up. People wanted to relive the courage and determination of one man who is certainly going to live in the hearts of football lovers for a long, long time to come. The man I'm speaking of is the late Peter Crimmins. For Hawthorne fans, indeed all football fans, the glory of the Hawks' 1976 Premiership triumph was overshadowed by the loss of one of the game's most courageous sons. While Hawthorne had been waging its grand final battle against North Melbourne at the MCG, Peter Crimmins had been waging his own private battle against cancer. Hawthorne was to win, but the whole football world was to lose one of its most popular leaders. From the time Peter Crimmins left Assumption College and joined the lowly Hawks back in 1966, he was to give total loyalty and devotion to the club. The little blonde rover sported his number five Guernsey in 176 matches, yet in Hawthorne's great years of the mid-70s, when he should have been at his prime, illness cut his career short. Crimmins was only 26 when he played his last match in 1975. While Crimmins was fighting cancer, his former teammates were determined to win the Premiership in 1976, and they did just that. Straight after their win, they took the Silver Premiership Cup around to the home of their dying teammate. He may not have played, but he was the inspiration behind the Hawks' Premiership win. Crimmins following up, takes the ball. 
Hawthorne kicking towards the scoreboard and it comes a tap down towards Crillon. Crillon fires, it's a goal. To the ball. Martello gets it down, it comes to Bonnie. Bonnie does a poor kick out towards Crimmins. Crimmins recovers, swings around on the half forward flank. Around he comes for, towards Hudson and Matt, uh, Lawrence. Lawrence has to get away, but Crimmins comes in. Crimmins kicks the ball long, it's Rice going leading in the game. And drives him forward, Hudson comes in there. The ball escapes him, now. Two comes little Crimmins. Crimmins has it, he's running into an open goal, he kicks. He's a, a tragic photograph. But Sun photographer Clive McKinnon's award-winning picture of the Hawks that night is certainly hard to forget. Three days after the grand final, Peter Crimmins died. This short film segment, however, showed the Peter Crimmins the football fans will always remember. Peter Crimmins, one of football's most tragic losses, but he certainly won't be forgotten. Time now on NEC Fantastic Footy Flashbacks to make one of our popular draws. All those people that have entered throughout the season have the opportunity of winning that wonderful portable colour television set. We've had thousands of entries. And after delving deep into the barrel, our winner for this particular week is Mr Smith of Ligon Street, Carlton. I know you'd like to see the fiery match-winning Brent Croswell, Mr Smith. That may have to wait for another day, but congratulations to you if you've been sitting at home watching a black and white. Big news for you. We'll be in touch. You've won one of NEC's great prizes, that portable colour television set. We've got more draws, of course, to make throughout the season. And next week, reliving some more great action from days gone by in NEC's fantastic footy flashbacks. Throughout season 85, all letters will go into our fantastic footy flashbacks barrel and be eligible to win one of six magnificent portable televisions from NEC. At the end of the season, all entries will go back into the barrel for the major prize draw of this outstanding 63 centimeter stereo color television and a VHS video hi-fi from NEC, high technology color television and video. Thank you, Sandy. Yes, Migsy Crimmins, what a great to wear a brown and gold jumper in the last 20 or 30 years out there, and he'll never be forgotten. We'll take a break. Back with more action on Seven's Big League in just a moment. Carlton continue their bid for final supremacy next on Seven's Big League. Here are tonight's Tats 2 results, just drawn under government supervision. Because of its soil deposit eliminator, the Hoover Elite 900 gets clothes cleaner and brighter. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. These are the magnificent new Series 3 Bluebirds. They're packed with luxury features and a new, more efficient 2-litre engine. This month, you can drive home in a brand new Bluebird for just $10,990. Ho! Oh, we don't need these. That's because there's no extra costs. Your Nissan dealer is including all on-road costs. This is a once only price of $10,990 for the Bluebird GL 4 speed. Come alive, come and drive, Nissan. For a bargain-priced holiday in peaceful New Zealand, open the New Zealand Adventure Planner. Choose from leisurely strolls over rolling mountains or tranquil rides down gentle rivers. Cruise comfortably along smooth highways or watch the natives at their national sport. Remember, a fun-packed holiday in New Zealand has never been smoother sailing. So for more bargains, get your New Zealand Adventure Planner from your travel end and visit the New Zealand you never expected with Qantas and Air New Zealand. Every year, countless thousands of advertisements and commercials appear in Australia. Nearly all come under review in one way or another to make sure they're not misleading or offensive. Just the same. You may see an advertisement you think is misleading or offensive. That's where we come in. The Advertising Standards Council, an independent body whose job it is to hear complaints about advertising. So, if an advertisement bothers you, bother us. The Advertising Standards Council, or contact this station. This is Abby, a very beautiful and powerful woman with the money and connections to get exactly what she wants. Valdine is equally beautiful. She also has money and connections. But the similarities stop there, except for the man in their lives. Not Landing, 9.30 tonight. Although season 1985 has been a disappointing one for Fitzroy, the Lions have shown some improved form in recent weeks, accounting for Collingwood in round 18 and going down to Footscray by less than a goal last week. Today, they journeyed to Prince's Park to clash with the informed Carlton, a side that hasn't been beaten since round 12. 
Also, against the Roys was their poor record at Princes Park as they won only twice there against Carlton in the last 15 years, namely 1977 and 1983, with, of course, a draw being fought out in the 1982 season. The Blues, too, were strengthened today by the return to the side of many of their top players, on paper at least, indicating Fitzroy certainly had the job ahead of them. Sandy Roberts and Bob Skilton are our commentators, and tonight we pick up the action at the start of the second quarter. Carlton is leading by 16 points. And so we go into the second term here at Prince's Park, and let's see what Fitzroy can do kicking with the breeze. They trail 1-2 to 3-6. Not a great deficit, and in fact they blanketed Carlton to a certain extent in that first term. Badly overrun. Buckley allowed in. Dropped the football. And able to make amends was Tim Peakin. Down towards half forward, Bernie Harris has got to give it to Des English. Short to the half forward line, Dean. Well, it's not to the half forward line yet. Dean's going to put it down there. It's just on centre wing. Bernie Harris has had a pretty busy first term for the Roys. Madden playing from behind. Road. No free kicks given. Road gives it across to Sheldon. He promptly puts it out of bounds on the ball. He's looking for McConville. And, uh, well, there's a few supporters braving the coal. It's fresh, a little chilly, but a great day for the players. To centre wing, or oh, Madden. They all misread it, so Des English says thump straight to Wayne Blackwell. Blackwell's high kick gathers about 8 metres, but about 40 metres high. McConville tries to mark. Turner loses it. Pekin, a long kick. English back on it again. Lost sight of it. Dean lending back up support. Across to Meldrum. Loken wearing him like a glove. Picked up for Fitzroy by Keane. Down towards the half forward line and Conlon. Tapping the ball along in front. Loses it now as Alvin puts his body over the top. And Peter Cameron will come in for a bounce. So the bounce to take place across the half forward line. Thrown up. We've thrown up most of the day today. In fact, probably all of the day. Meldrum. A hand pass towards Hunter, under pressure, gives it back towards Meldrum, poor hand pass. And so we find now Buckley trying to make amends for that, and Dewey Buckley now will cause the bounce to take place just short of half four. You've got it in for Ken, haven't you? You have got it in for him. Do you sit down and watch the tapes every Monday morning or something? The line. What was the ball towards goal? You do. And it just goes through for one point there to Ross Lyon, his second point for the game. There's no player in the game I admire more than Ken Hunter, and I leave it there. Good. Well, you can stop stirring him on the other hand, OK? <laughs> You're giving him heaps. 3-6 to 1-3. Here he is. One of the greatest actors, but a very effective footballer. Kicked it a lot further than he usually does. <laughs> oh, the centre wing. Silvani's kick. Oh, there's the mark Great of the mark. day so far. And uh, Ross Lyon, a youngster who... Fitzroy think a lot of, and uh, they Wells suggest he will uh, be an excellent player in the future. Yes, has played extremely well since coming into the side. Quinlan, one grab, can't complete it. The handball pushed out, Alvin will receive it. Shrugs one tackle, does well, but he's got no one to get the handball to, so he puts his body in over the football. Ah, oh, and he's pinged! how he should be, he wasn't trying to get the ball out. So the free kick has gone the way of Dean Turner. Comments there from Bob Skilton down towards the uh, forward line. Hunter couldn't take it, could almost be a free kick to Quinlan. No, said the umpire. Conlon goes in aggressively, pushed towards the line and eventually over it for one behind. So another point on the board. Fitzroy moved to 1-4. Silvani puts it back into play. It's taken out wide by Johnston. His kick up towards half-forward. Sheldon waiting for it. Couldn't quite take the mark. Kicks it off the ground. Osmond coming out. Does likewise. Got the ball forward. Buckley missed it. Osmond gets it out now to Turner. Graham Osmond that was. Madden coming through. Takes a nice mark. Madden puts the ball long up towards half-forward. Richard Osmond almost a great mark. Comes in. Tackles Harms. Harms a wide hand pass out towards Ashman. Ashman with Pekin as he's shadowed, taps the ball forward. Mackenzie picks it up, gets it back to Ashman. Ashman goes short across the ground. Excellent play by Rod Ashman. Finds Harms at centre half forward. So Ashman, an excellent piece of play. And Wayne Harms now, after taking the tap from uh, Mackenzie, Warren Mackenzie getting the ball down to Harms. 
And so Wayne Harms now towards goal. Four points to Wayne Harms, his first goal for the game. So Harms won, Carlton 4-6-30, Fitzroy 1-4-10, and a good start by Carlton kicking into the breeze. And but Robert, is it my imagination or has that breeze strengthened? You know, as we said during that first quarter, Sandy, I, does, I do think it has strengthened, but here at Carlton, if you take the ball around with the shade of the, the grandstands, once you get the ball towards yep. about half forward, you are protected by the breeze. 30 plays 10, Madden wins it, Blackwell couldn't take it, socket off the ground, down towards Sheldon, got a shocking bounce, so too did Harms, but he'll be quick to butter up, Sheldon lends support, goes on to the left foot now, down towards half forward, Fraser couldn't quite take the mark, and Fitzroy should get out of trouble, they will through effective handball, Blakey's on the ground, gives it across to Barwick, Barwick steadies, fires long up towards half forward, Silvani's in front of Quinlan, Quinlan can't take the football at the bottom, nor can he get the handball out, and the umpire will come in, and we'll see a bounce on Fitzroy's uh, forward line, with at the moment Carlton leading by 20 points. I don't know whether the breeze has freshened, I said he was got cold. <laughs> That's the chill factor. Oh dear, it's strength. And Conlon beautifully to Bernie Harris. He fires at goal and he puts it through. Sometimes Hello. life gets so crowded with financial problems, we don't have room to move. Hello, kids. Hello, dog. That's why there's Westpac's altogether banking package. There's high interest savings, a check account free of activity charges, automatic bill payments, and a Westpac MasterCard with a line of credit to help you through the tough times. Even discounts on insurance and personal loans. If you need room to move, get it all together with Westpac, the bank. Big Out Drive. They've got energy. They got knowledge. And technology. The team that developed oils for the space shuttle. The team that keeps this car in the race is the mobile team that brings you Super Drop, the oil that's friction modified for 20,000 kilometers. They're your mobile team. They're your mobile team. We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia. From NEC comes a video recorder with features that lead the way. Dual audio heads ensure the highest quality hi-fi stereo sound. Two-speed recording means eight hours from one four-hour tape and NEC's four tape heads give you perfect slow motion and freeze. Compare NEC's range at your retailer. Feature for feature, I reckon NEC's miles ahead. Australia's champion in video too. Only Bounty takes succulent white coconut and makes it moist and tender. Lavishly coated in thick milk chocolate. Bounty, so moist, so tender. Only Bounty gives you moist, tender coconut. In the second quarter of the 15 minute mark, or just past it, Carlton leading by 16 points. Blakey was up high, Harms first of the ball. It's intercepted now by Roos. Roos Mother. kicks smothered off the boot. Good play by Johnston. He gets the ball out towards Sheldon. Sheldon snap. I think a free kick has been played prior to that one. And Rendell looks as though he will take the free kick for the Maroons. came from Dean. Knight first on the scene. A hand pass coming towards Blakey that not the, finding the player it was meant for. It goes over the bounding line. Good pressure from Reese Jones. And so we'll find a throw in to take place. How are your hands, Bob? Very cold, Sandy. And they won't be for much longer because I'm glad you've reminded me. Oh, you bought the gloves. <laughs> you bought the gloves. Fraser Murphy up high. Cooper took the mark. Gets a hand pass in. And it's over the bounding line. And that pause is Bob, in fact, diving for the gloves. Whilst Will just soldier on. Fitzroy under plenty of pressure at the moment. There's a hurried snapshot down towards Ashman. 
takes the mark 10 metres out from goal directly. Seven kicks to Rod Ashman. Well, although he's in the mud patch, he shouldn't miss. He doesn't miss, and that's a very handy goal into the breeze. And well, Petroy must be starting to wonder what they can do. They're kicking with it at the moment, but they're looking down the barrel. 5 8 plays 2-4 on 7th Big League and Rod Ashman has contributed two goals, one of that score. In this quarter, Carlton have added two goals, two. Fitzroy, one goal, two. Madden gets a tap. Ashman's short kick going forward. McConville, oh, that's good play by McConville. Showed great courage to take that. Drives it forward, looking for McKitty. Can't take the mark. It's punched away there by Osmond. Buckley kicks the ball off the ground. Goes on again. Kicks it off the ground again. But it's offline. And a one point the result kicked by one James Buckley. So one point to Carlton. Takes him to five goals, 9.39 to Fitzroy. 2-4-16. So the kick back into play. Played some 17 or 18 minutes. Oh, Madden got up high to tap it down towards Johnson, but he couldn't take it. Pushed towards centre wing. Des English will be first to it if he can keep it in play. He does. Short to Tommy Alvin, but too short on that occasion. Knight, Barwick, does well. Doug comes away. Streaming up towards the half-forward line. Loken. Well held by Melbourne. Silvani towards the line and another throw in the top. Bernie Harris, Steve Silvani and Benito. Here's the throw in. Madden again. Peter Road just bumped over the line. And so another throw in the top. That's the man bumping him was Andrew Cross, formerly with the Saints. Madden plucked it out and tried to push it out the back door. Now was in the back, Sammy. If you want to clear it, surely you give a free give kick to the player kick, yes. who made the he play. Didn't. And got the push in the back. Well, don't blame me, Robert. I'm not the man in mind. He didn't do it, so play goes on. Keane's kick is partly smothered, and Buckley will mark it. We'll have to play it because it was touched. Des English showing strength. He says, get out of the way, Reese. I'm trying to get a kick, and he can't win it. But beautiful tackle, Reese on Bernie Harris allows Buckley through. That's great play. Angry to see Rendell mark it into it. Well, Big Matt's been in top form since coming back after injury. Eight kicks. Oh, the pace. Well done, Matt. Across centre to Mike Nettlefold. Lovely smother by Harms. Nettlefold in again, just tries to poke it back towards Rendell. No one able to pick it up. Buckley in there now for Carlton. Eventually it comes out the way of McIver. He pokes it wide. They go up towards the half forward line. Line takes the mark. Steadies. Fires in towards goal and puts it through. So Ross Lyon scores a very, very much needed goal for the Royals. 3 4 plays 5 9 on Sevens Big League. Poor defence by Carlton. Uh, loose players running everywhere on that occasion. And the Ross Lyon, who Fitzroy. Take a tremendous amount off. So, Lyon now back there in the centre. Matt Rendell awaiting the bounce. There's the board. 39 to 22. 17 points to the margin. So, Carlton have gained one point in this quarter. They had a 16 point break at quarter time. So, after 18 minutes of football in the second quarter, Carlton have gained one point. Lyon puts it forward, and Ken Hunter takes the mark. Hunter looking for the player running past, but now electing to go forward. Using the drop punt up towards half forward. It's punched away by McConville. Reese Jones came through. Get the hand, lots of, gets the hand pass in. Gets you, got you, whatever you like. And Meldrum comes out with the ball. Goes short. A beautiful pass by Meldrum. Hunt, Hunt, not Hunt. Murphy. And I thought Murphy was, uh, he had Harms right alongside him. I thought that Murphy had put himself in a bit of trouble when he played on that occasion, but Murphy putting it through for his second goal.
You can get it riding. You can get it sliding. You can feel it coming on about four. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. Vic Bitter. You can get it walking. You can get it talking. You can get it working a plow. Matter of fact, I got it now. Victoria Bitter. Can national Neo High Top batteries climb a 30-story building? Let's see. What a performance! So go to the top with National Neo High Top Batteries. Can you identify this car? The 760 GLE. The Germans think it's the Volvo 760 GLE, but this is the new four-cylinder Volvo, the 740 GLE. Volvo's latest thinking is behind its high-technology engine, incredible use of space, and brilliant driver features plus the safety and reliability you'd expect from Volvo. Oh yeah, Volvo, 740 GLE. Pity, it should be a German car. Volvo's latest thinking, the new 740 GLE. Tomorrow is Sunday Press Day. Can the Kane government clinch control of the Legislative Council? Tomorrow, Sunday Press will have the latest on the poll. Read Richard Shear's report on a once peaceful town where locals claim the Orange people are waging a terror campaign against them. Keith Stackpole reports on this week's cricket at Edgbaston. Golf writer John Rice looks at the breakthrough of women in golf. Plus football, a full roundup of all Saturday's matches. Sunday Press, out tomorrow. Carlton and Fitzroy will continue their battle at Prince's Park in just a moment. Another battle is being fought out tonight in the state tally room for the state seat of Nutter Wadding between Mrs Ives and Varty. Let's go up now to the Seven National Newsroom and Laurie Wilson to tell us the latest on that poll. Thanks, Peter. Well, in fact, the first, vounce, uh, first votes have now, in fact, been counted in the Nunawading province election. Shane Castleman's at the tally room. Shane, has any trend emerged as yet? There certainly has, Laurie. Um, with 21.3% uh, of the votes now counted, it appears that uh, the Liberals, Mrs Rosemary Varty, um, has Nunawading just about sewn up at this stage. Uh, she's got 50.3% of the votes, while Bob Ives only has 37.7% of the votes. Uh, it's a fairly clear lead and it uh, backs up our exit poll. Uh, in fact, that looks a bit conservative at this stage. The only proviso is, of course, that um, we don't know at this stage which booze these votes have come from, but uh, with 20%, 21% of the votes counted, it certainly seems that Mrs Varty uh, has the uh, Nunawading seat sewn up. Uh, back to you. Thanks, Shane. Certainly it does. In fact, as Shane said, that uh, was reflected in our exclusive exit poll, suggesting that Mrs Varty would, in fact, take the seat. The survey predicts that on a two-party preferred basis, Labor will gain 43.9% of the vote and the Liberals 56.1%. About 14% of interviewees voted differently from the March election. 10% changed to Liberal, while only 3.6% opted for Labor. Overall, this represents a 5 to 6% swing to the Liberals. And uh, we'll keep you up to date with latest developments throughout the evening. Now it's back to Peter Landy and Seven's Big League. Thank you, Laurie. We're in the second quarter of the game out at Princess Park between Carlton and Fitzroy. We pick up play now at the 22-minute mark of that term. Once again, we'll be up against Rendell. 45 plays 22. They'll be at it all day, these two. Sheldon, backpedalling. Still he goes, the kick was smothered by Knight and he'll butter up well, picks it up beautifully, the wet football, stumbles but recovers nicely, steadies in towards full forward, Harris waits at the back, can't quite complete the mark and it's Silvani who pushes it over the line for a point. A good football led by both sides. Great recovery by Knight but also by Silvani. Maturity beyond his years. Oh, Madden says, look, I'm going to pluck one. If you don't mind, I'll pluck that one. Poor kick, poor kick, Darwin with strength to half forward, but <laughs> he says, now look, you've got to stop putting it down here because I will get it away eventually, man. Silvani to Sheldon to Reese jones but the boundary line may beat Reese. No, I don't think it will. He's got time to have a bit of a chat. Got one high, plays on, then gets flattened. And the umpire wanders down the ground. Ashman across to Hunter. 
Meldrum and Loken. Meldrum used the body. What did you think of that one, Bobby? I agree with that one. Illegally. Yep. There's no doubt it was a free kick, Sandy. Well, he explained the term and the former South Australian will kick up towards centre wing, where another former South Australian, Matt Rendell, takes the mark. Unusual to see a nice piece of disposal from the South Australian. Bernie Harris. And that's silly, Bernie. He'll lose it. He'll lose it. Centre field, Reese Jones. Charles Hawke, was he a brother of G? No, he was in the carry-ons with Kenneth Williams. Fraser Murphy to the half-forward line. Mackenzie will see it over the line in another throw. Sid James was the other one. If we go to carry on this trivial pursuit with Wayne Harms, this is okay. Is Carlton doing well, Sandy? They've uh, gone for 6 9 45 with Fitzroy on 3 5 23. 22 points the margin, so Carlton have gone one goal further against the Breeze as we find the hand pass coming over the top that time from Turner. It's taken by Keane. Keane wobbles the wall forward. Lyons, that's a good mark from Lyons. And so Ross Lyon has the chance of putting his second goal on the board. And uh, a very busy little player, Ross Lyon. And, uh, so Stephen Silvani on the mark, not quite on camera as Lyon comes forward, goes towards goal, two goals to Ross Lyon. Now it's touched off the mark, sorry for that. It did go through, but the goal, the goal umpire being told by the field umpire that it was touched off the mark, so a poor kick that time from the youngster Ross Lyon. He's been on target, Bob, hasn't he? Well, he will learn from uh, a kick like that, Sandy, to give himself more room. He has got one goal, three on the mark so far so yes you could say that Melbourne good play got the hand pass in road excuse me and so now we find cross to take the ball away well tackled Pekin got it out towards Nettlefold put him under trouble Blackwell tried to get it forward kicked off the ground by cross English coming out over the boundary line goes the reliable as ever Des English and so a throw in to take place midway between center wing and half forward flank for Fitzroy 21 points to margin. Madden gets the tap down. Road, a hand pass over the top, finds English. English puts the short kick in. Johnston, the hand pass across to Buckley. Buckley to Meldrum. Meldrum goes short, and Mackenzie takes the mark. Nothing in the square, Bob. Little Fraser's down there. Go score. Buckley was the target. Waiting is Meldrum. Shrugs two tackles. Loses the football, goes in to try and get it again. Great play by McIver. Excellent play. He's done a solid job right throughout today. McIver has been a fine player. And as we speak, rain starting to fall over Prince's Park. The chill factor down to possibly minus four. There's a high kick in towards full forward. Murphy waits down. Snap across the face of goal, but it's given to Knight. And Scott Knight's kick down towards the half-back line. Well, Alvin and Harm should win out here because it's two against one. Down towards Sheldon. Gets a nudge in the back. Reese Jones is at the bottom of that pack. Gets it out the back door towards Johnston. Johnston's hurried. Kick towards full forward. And McKenzie takes the mark. With that kick, Sandy, you could say flukes at counter. So Warren McKenzie, who kicked the goal in the first term. That's not against McKenzie when I say that, Sandy. I'm delighted to see Warren McKenzie doing as well as he is, about to bring his second goal on the board. But uh, <laughs> I'd love to see a youngster make good, Sandy. As McKenzie puts through his second goal. Your hand become a little bit shorter from the pocket. Another goal on the board to the Blues, and they move to 7-9. Fitzroy 3-6 on Seven's Big League. You're watching Seven's Big League. 
part of the Nissan BFL Premiership season. And so Carlton winning the match by 28 points. They have now moved up to third place on the ladder with the double chance. The Blues unbeaten since round 12. In the stats, Carlton on top, as you can see, in all departments, excepting uh, the marks, Fitzroy having 11 more. Let's go to now our reporter at Princess Park this afternoon, and it was Peter Donegan. Today's 28-point win by Blues takes them into third position on the Premiership table, and should they beat the Hawks next week, the coveted double chance is theirs. Carlton led by 27 points at half time and increased that margin by only one point in the second half. The man principally responsible for the early lead was David Rhys Jones. Well, Rhys, well done. Uh, would you consider that to be your best game since you joined Carlton? Oh, you know, I've been happy with my form over the last couple of weeks. You know, the last probably four or five. You know, I've been doing a bit better than early in the season. So, um, you know, I've been pretty happy with my form of late. Considering the ground conditions out there, you looked as though you were playing on a dry day in the first half. You seemed to have the ball on a string. Oh, no, I, I prefer these sort of conditions a little bit. It brings the, um, the other players back, back a bit in speed, so it makes it a bit easier for me. Now, you've got a bit of a whack in the eye there. I think it was early in the third quarter. Uh, we can see that it's not looking too good. Any after effects from that? Oh, no, you know, it blurred me for a little while, but it's, you know, it's, it'll be all right. Giant ruckman Justin Madden was also delighted with his performance. I'd, uh, I'd like to think I did well. I, I suppose I haven't looked at the stats or uh, that sort of thing, but the main thing that was, was that we won, and... Fortunately, I've played a, a reasonable sort of a game, so I was pretty pleased. Being six foot nine, six foot ten, how do the heavy conditions affect you? Oh, I don't mind them too much. I should have bring everybody back to Marcus. As long as the ball's not too slippery, it's OK. Now, your own form over the latter half of the season has been outstanding, so much so that they're now talking about the Brownlow medal and you being one of the leading contenders. Have you thought about that? Oh, not really, no. I just, just played each week as it came and uh, just concentrating on my own form make sure that we get into the finals and that uh, we all do well. I believe that Peter Donigan had to stand at a box for that interview and still only came up to his navel. We'll take a break, back with more action in just a moment. Scott Palmer returns with the hottest news in football, next on Seven's Big League. When it comes to your insurance, there's a name you need to know. There's safe and sure and they care for you more than the S. I've been insured with SIO for years. Not long ago, I had an accident. A bad one. The car was a writer. Boy, was I glad I had an SIO agreed value policy. Instead of just getting market value, which could have been a much lower figure, I got back the full sum insured from SIO with no hassles. So if you have an accident, big or small, it's great to know with SIO, you'll be well looked after. They're okay. Tomorrow is Sunday Press Day. Can the Kane government clinch control of the Legislative Council? Tomorrow, Sunday Press will have the latest on the poll. Read Richard Shear's report on a once peaceful town where locals claim the Orange people are waging a terror campaign against them. Keith Stackpole reports on this week's cricket at Edgbaston. Golf writer John Rice looks at the breakthrough of women in golf. Plus football, a full roundup of all Saturday's matches. Sunday Press, out tomorrow. What is Australia saying about Holden Commodore and Chimera? The Commodore has more equipment, more comfort, more technology and more value. The Holden Chimera? I love it. Thrilled. That's the best thing I ever did. Yes, they're cars we can all feel proud of. And to keep them best sellers, GMH is giving Holden dealers factory bonuses to pass on to you. That's right, GMH factory bonuses on Commodore and Chimera, but only for a limited time. It's time to buy better at your Holden dealer, now. And now, outside the house... Taubman's new Extra Tough All-Weather Gloss Acrylic. Extra Tough because it stays hard and glossy for up to 10 years. Extra Tough because it stretches and doesn't crack. And for masonry, Taubman's All-Weather Cement, Brick and Fibro Acrylic. It's doubly thick, so cracks and holes just disappear. Dries to a unique coarse finish that lasts for years, and all weather cleans up with water. And I did it my way. If your response is all of the above, then the rest is easy. Join us for Knott's Landing and Falcon Crest, Saturday night on 7. 
Time to check the siren scores now of our non-televised matches this afternoon. And first of all, down at Cadinia Park, Geelong recording a good win over the Swans. They led by 58 points at half-time, though, although they ultimately won by 27. Adler got five for the Cats, and Kappa got three for the Swans. Essendon and Melbourne, the Demons coming back pretty well in the latter half of the match. But unfortunately for them, they went down by only 15 points. Danaher got four for Essendon and Merritt three for Melbourne. Corden a four and Ted Fitch finished up with three goals. The Bombers by 15. Collingwood and St Kilda and the Magpies fairly comfortably all day. Uh, Williams got five for Collingwood and Richardson four and for St Kilda. John Bennett got three goals and two each to Fashini and Burns. Don't forget tomorrow. Our match in the Army Reserve Cup is between Footscray and Hawthorne. The Hawks currently in second place on the ladder and perhaps a chance to get some revenge on the Bulldogs after their seniors had beaten them by five points at the Western Oval this afternoon. Time now for Footy Stop Press as we go up to the offices of the Sunday Press and say a very good evening to their sporting editor, Scotty Palmer. Good evening, Peter, and welcome viewers back into the Sunday Press. Fitzroy is fuming over the Swans boss, Dr Edelston, tonight, who claimed that a club could go to the wall financially in a week or two. They believe he was referring to them. The Weegard brothers, Keith and Leon, called it fantasy, a plot to undermine the club, and that the doctor doesn't know the ropes at talking at dinners. They're fuming all over Fitzroy tonight, and I believe they're looking at their own form of private ownership. Carlton, though, is looking towards a double chance, said coach David Parkin. We're almost at full strength, and we've got the depth now to carry us through. Next week, we'll tell the story, said David. Robbie Walls was pleased with the Lions' effort after losing Pert and Loken today. Only 7,300 people turned up at Arden Street for what could be North's last game there. And a win against Richmond, which John Kennedy thinks has lifted the ruse out of a trough. We're not home yet, he warned. We still have Fitzroy and Hawthorne, and in footy, anything can happen. Kennedy got a scare when Phil Crick Cracker limped off today, but he's OK. He only sprained his ankle, and he should be right for next week. Richmond's Paul Sproul said the Tigers need more endeavour and more players. Anir has a hand injury from the game and could miss next week. Swans coach John Northey wants to keep on coaching. He's letting everybody know. He said after the side lost to Geelong that the people who have been critical of him should do their homework. I believe I've, I've taught the Swans a lot and that the players have responded to me, said Northey. Some of those so-called experts should get off their backsides and think before they speak, he said. Northey also said that the Geelong side was a much better finals proposition than North Melbourne. Tom Hapey said he wasn't thinking about North. We're taking one game at a time, typical Tom. And he said his own job, he said he hasn't had any discussions at all with the Cats on that. It'll come a lot later in the season. Essendon champion Tim Watson is in St Vincent's Hospital tonight having precautionary x-rays taken. He was kicked in the stomach early against Melbourne and had to leave the arena. Kevin Sheedy is confident though that he'll be right for next week. He wasn't pleased with the second half fade out, but he said he tried three young players today and several stars came back after injury. Danaher and Duckworth both pulled up well. Ron Barassi was thrilled with the Demons effort. Fantastic, he said. It was really strong stuff. And I hear the gold pass boys at the MCG are right behind Sir Billy Snedden. Collingwood's coach, Bob Rose, said Collingwood had planned to finish the season off on a high note with three wins and the first came today. He said David Cloak was an inspiration to the side in his comeback after injury. Everyone at VFL Park was talking of the likely return of Des Tuddenham to Victoria Park next year in a role to support Rose. St Kilda's Graham Jelly said that the last game of the season was now vital for the Saints. It's been many years since our side has never won a match at home, he said. Next week, he'll have Keel doubtful because of a hip injury. It was so boggy at the Western Oval that Barry Michael, the world champion, couldn't make his lap of honour in a car, but the Bulldogs were celebrating anyway. The double chance and Mick Malthouse said that when you're one, two or three in the finals, you've got a chance for the premiership. What a 30 second birthday present for him and Scragger turned eight today. But for Hawthorne, it was gloom and doom. Alan Jean said the next two games were critical for the Hawks' premiership chances. The showdown, he said, will be against the Blues next week. Bertie Di Pietro has been reported for allegedly striking Brian Royal with a forearm, but the pressmen at the match are doubtful about it. There's surprisingly no injuries out there at the Western Oval in that hard slog. And before I go, Peter, I'd like to wish uh, the Richmond Juniors the best of luck in their three premiership matches at Glen Free tomorrow. Back to you, mate. OK, thank you, Scotty, and full details of those reports in the Sunday Press out tomorrow. We'll take a break. More action coming up in just a moment. The Ruse, desperate for a finals berth. Next on Seven's Big League. Most people call it paradise. I just call it home. Diamond Head, Waikiki. 
For difficult spots, the new Hoover Turbo Power comes complete with the unique burst of power switch. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. If you want to do it right, you need Homestead. The hardware store where you get more. Homestead. Product, the right price and good advice. More, more, more. Ford, we give you more. Now, with more big factory bonuses from Ford, your Ford dealer can give you even more. When you pick up an ace deal on current model Laser, Meteor, Telstar and TX5. With new models waiting on the sidelines, you'd better hurry. Get an ace deal on Laser, Meteor, Telstar and TX5. See your Ford dealer now. Ford, we give you more. Tonight, a well-earned strike turns into a sudden stroke. That doctor doesn't know his stethoscope from his left ear. Are you telling me that your emergency room is being run by an unqualified doctor? And every single one of them is an experienced ER physician. I insist on it. The doctor in charge was totally incompetent. You actually left that man in charge of this place. I don't believe what I'm hearing. It was as if he had never seen a heart case before. A favor to a friend shows a deadly difference in doctors. Quincy M.E., 8.30 tonight on 7. North Melbourne played their first game of Australian football at the Arden Street Grounds on the 29th of April, 1882. Today, they returned there for their 110th hit out against Richmond, and it was probably their last senior match at a, uh, a VFL ground that most spectators would class as mediocre at best. Mediocre, though, wouldn't even come close to describing the Tigers', di uh, Tigers dismal efforts against Carlton last week, while North put in a splendid last quarter effort to steal the game by five points from the Sydney Swans at the SCG. Both teams had been knocked around by injuries, the Kangaroos losing their skipper Wayne Schimmelbush again, and the Tigers having to find replacements for Michael Roach and Dale Waitman. Peter McKenna and Jack Edwards are our commentators at the ground, and tonight we join the action at the two-minute mark of the second quarter. It's Richmond leading by one point. Jamie Stevenson taken off him. He goes in to do the ruck work, actually, as uh, James does a flying kick. There's Rioli. You can't see his number, but pretty easy to pick out. Fury up high. Phil Cracker punched away there by Francis to Crevin. Crevin. Backer comes to Trevor Poole. He can't pick it up. Now he's got it. A lovely hand pass back to Peter Francis. To Strawn. Strawn. Backer comes to a near. Johnny and near. There's handballs going everywhere at the moment. Back to Trevor Poole. Up high. And a nice strong mark taken there by Craig Stewart in the centre of the ground. He plays on and goes to the torpedo punt. Out wide to Gavin Bays. Bays kicked a beautiful goal in the first quarter. He goes short. He's looking for Pickering. He gets bundled out of the way by Glenn Dinning. It's grabbed there by Smith. Smith a high ball, Demetrio and Crabben and Jeff and Greg. Greg nearly took it on the second bite, but the skills of Keith Greg as he ducks back, he's the hero of the North crowd. He finds Johnny Holt. Holt sprints away, always looks brilliant with that uh, flashy run of his. Up towards uh, full forward. That comes out to Phil Cracker, but in the meantime, it was in the back to Kim Hodgman, about 40 metres out from the North Melbourne goal. Uh, Crack was just about to break away and uh, have a shot to goal, but now Hodgman puts the ball up toward the goal square. No oh. mark taken, it's just out of goal. Suck it off the ground, and the North Melbourne camp said it's a goal. Yes, it is. Suck it through by whom? I'm not too sure. Jonas. I Jonas think. it was, kicking it off the ground. And now North Melbourne are level with Richmond in the second term. We've only been playing, in fact, we haven't gone to my clock, it hasn't worked. So we've only been playing a couple of minutes. 4-4-28 to 4-4-28, that's the story on the scoreboard. Well, if you looked at the flags here, there was no doubt the breeze is favouring the end, which Richmond is kicking to now, but uh, Richmond scored well down the other end, so it's not going to make uh, that much of a difference today. There's a near getting the ball. Uh, Keith Gregg, he's a good player. He just reads the ball so well. Back it comes to Jeff well done. against Holt. It made a difference having Holt on the ground. Beautiful football to Andy Demetrio. He, he kicks it out wide. The lead has been made by McCann. McCann right on the boundary line. Leads are being made. They're being ignored. McCann's go going to go for the long kick at goal. It's a high-floating drop punt. It comes back. Oh, boy, that's a great-looking kick. 
It's a goal to Steve McCann. What a beautiful goal from the boundary line. And North Melbourne hit the lead by one goal. 5-4 North, Richmond 4-4. Four -four. Oh, what a strange game of football. The breeze is favouring the left hand of your screen. That's the uh, northern end of the ground where North had possession or had the use of the breeze in the first quarter and uh, struggled to get 3-4 against Richmond's 4-4. Now, in the first three or so minutes of the second turn, they've added two goals against the breeze. So maybe the breeze doesn't mean a thing. Greg tries to hook it out, did so successfully too. Can't make much contact though and the umpire will be forced to bounce. Umpire Morrow coming in to adjudicate here, and the bounce taking place just uh, still in the square, but favouring Richmond's half-forward zone. It's been kicked by Arsiri up high toward Holt, who was pushed in the back, and oh. the umpire said free kick. I thought it was a bit of an Academy Award performance, that one, Jack. Well, he might have been a little I bit think that It way. might have been a little nudge in the back, but Holt has made a difference, actually. That was a good coaching move by Kennedy, bringing him on on Jep, who had a great first quarter. There's uh, Jonas trying to boot it off the ground, and uh, it's a free kick going Richmond's way. Now, who's taking this one? It's Craig Stewart was held, said the umpire. Umpire Kevin Smith officiating with umpire Jeff Morrow. Up towards half forward, Geary could have caught one in the back. No, said the umpire. In they go after in that mud patch in the centre and it is a free kick going North Melbourne's way to Peter German. They'll finish up losing Rioli in there today. <laughs> we've got to find him. Well, look at German there. Uh, look at that mud, eh? That's the old-fashioned the football is absolutely covered. That ball's gone about 20 metres. Tim Jepp, he's been a very good player and funny-looking handball to Rioli. Rioli and Phil Cracker. Rioli are tackled by Cracker and now the umpire Kevin Smith very, very late has played a free kick down the field against Phil Cracker. A bit unlucky, I thought, Phil. Well, the umpire indicating what it was paid for, and the ball with Pickering. Pickering on the half-forward flank. Looking down for Sawiz, so on a ball, he got around all right, can he shoot toward goal? He puts it up to the square, but it drops short, and the mark has been taken by Donald McDonald. Gee, they'll miss Roach up there today, I reckon, Jack. Gee, that's, that's dangerous. Hand passes to Greg, yes, they will oh. miss Roach. That was bad football. The ball now, a chance for Richmond to score. Only 25 metres out from their goal. North Melbourne playing the short game. James tried to hook it out of the pack, couldn't do so. Diving in on top. Oh. Should never have been a free kick, but he dived in for the ball. So the umpire has awarded the free kick to Johnny Anea. I noticed, noticed in the seconds today, Jack, players who dived on top of the ball, they were automatically getting free kicks. So if you dive in on it today, you're a big chance to get a free. I, I'm a little bit with you there, a bit lucky to get one, that one Anir, he's right in front as he fires, I think he's missed, yes, a bad miss by Anir, but you've got to score those ones from 20 metres out. Peter, with that ball though, it's going to be pretty difficult, the ball is covered in mud, it's not easy to control. Yeah, true. Short passes by Ramsey, found Larkin, 15 metres, I don't know why, but it's against Pickering for Larkin, there really wasn't much in that. Larkin, now look at the length of that kick, 25 metres at the top, and taken by Stewart. See, players will have to play in front today, or Peter, or they won't get a kick. Yep. Kick by Stewart, down toward the half-forward zone, Pickering got the front position, couldn't take the mark. It's hooked out now to Hodgman from Fury. He gets a left foot working up toward the wing position. Here's a chance for Richmond to get it out. Poole tries to break oh. away. Did it well, too. Gets the ball moving down towards Smith of North Melbourne, up high, but... Pickering had the front berth and nearly took the mark. He nearly did. You're right, Jack, as the hand pass comes to Andy Demetrio. He breaks away and kicks it wide. It's all Richmond because the North Melbourne player fell over Marcus Siri. It's Chris Burton taking the mark. What a kick and what a pass to Michael Pickering. He wants to give it to someone. But uh, that is certainly the only problem with the uh, distance kicking is the fact you can't get firm footing. But that is certainly just within kicking distance. For most players, Pickering is not a long kick. He should be able to land this one up around the goal square area, I think. Well, he has the breeze coming across from his left-hand side, so he has to aim for the left-hand goal post. He's done that well. He's put it through. It's a goal. Kicked by Michael Pickering, a much-needed goal, too. Sometimes life gets so crowded with financial problems, we don't have room to move. Hello, kids. Hello, dog. That's why there's Westpac's all-together banking package. There's high-interest savings, a check account free of activity charges, automatic bill payments, and a Westpac MasterCard with a line of credit to help you through the tough times. Even discounts on insurance and personal loans.
If you need room to move, get it all together with Westpac, the bank. Out of this hi-fi video recorder comes the best sound you'll get today. Now that's, that's real hi-fi video. Doing things around the home, I need all the help I can get, and that's why I go to Homestead. Product, price, and good advice. England, the Grand National. Melbourne, the Grand Final. And to celebrate the opening of new showrooms at the corner of Dandenong and Ferntree Gully Roads, New Oakley Motors are having a Grand Slam of events. There's special edition Grand Falcons, Grand Telstars, Grand Lasers, Grand Deals on a great range of used cars. Three minutes up the road, the Grand Slam goes on at 239 Ferntree Gully Road. Grand Slam events in service and spare parts. Grand Deals on trucks. The Grand Slam is at... Motors, they're the top team for... 7.30 Sunday. How do you not in love with Chris? Because I want you to be in love with me. Sons and daughters. I was half hoping you wouldn't be here, Lee. Then why don't you forget you saw anything? She'll have to spend tonight in jail. That's the least she deserves. Getting married is a mistake, Donna. We're too young. Don't smudge his makeup. You're gonna need more than makeup to fix your face by the time I finish with you, sweetheart. Oh! The solicitor said I could get 15 years. Sons and Daughters, it's Australia's most exciting drama, 7.30 Sunday. 13 minutes now into the second quarter. They had a very heavy shower here last night that made an enormous difference to the state of the ground as we see going in Johnny Law, but it was a free kick, I think, to Peter Jonas before that for holding the man. So the ball will come back to the centre-half back area. Jonas... Started off on Zakaski and uh, I thought Zakaski beat him in the first quarter. We see there's Peter Jonas, the ball, heavy ball. Doesn't travel far, but uh, the mark has been taken by German. German, a lovely short pass to Holt, who has looked good since coming on at quarter time. He swings onto that left foot. He is a great kick. He looks for McCann. McCann's, oh, good mark. A good mark. Too big then and too strong for Greg Strawn. He is... 25 to 30 metres out directly in front and this will certainly be a score for North Melbourne supporters. They'll be hoping for a goal. Well, he shouldn't have missed from there. North Melbourne 5-6 with Richmond on 5-6. McCann point blank range. You can kick the ball a proverbial mile. He puts it up high and puts it through the centre for North Melbourne now leading by one goal over Richmond on sevens big league. Two goals to Steve McCann. He's playing today. He was selected at full back, but at the moment he's playing a full forward on Greg Strawn. His marking ability will worry Strawn. Uh, although Greg normally has more trouble with uh, fast leading players like Beasley. Of course, he kicked 12 goals against Richmond a couple of weeks ago at BFL Park. A number of those were kicked on Greg Strawn. He had a spell in the seconds last week. Now he's back in the seniors. I noticed Dean Notting has come on the ground for Richmond. So at the bounce, McDonald got the second tap down to Hodgman. Hodgman out in front, got the ball moving off the left foot toward DeWire, running out toward the flank. DeWire first to it. Geary's there for Richmond. DeWire taps the ball out. Well done, too. North a chance now through Hodgman. He gathers his footing, goes goal, and he's put it up high, but it's going through. No, it's not. It's going out of bounds on the full. So you that breeze, breeze is fairly strong. Mm. Yep. It's uh, blowing across the ground and also to uh, one of the pockets at the Richmond end of the ground. So Richmond have the aid of the, the end that Richmond is kicking to, I should say. And uh, so Richmond have the aid of the breeze. So, uh, but a lot of the scoring being done at the other end, which yes, is uh, quite say, surprising. Strange. 4-4, four, four, Richmond kicked against the breeze in their first term and North Melbourne has already kicked two goals and a couple of points in this quarter. Rioli. Can't do much with it, getting a free kick. Here he comes. Oh, you can see a little bit of that yellow sash on him. Gets the ball up to the half-forward zone. A chance for Jeff. He got a hand pass back. Bays can't do much with it. There's an opportunity for North Melbourne. Picked up by Greg. And the champion goes forward, but the kick was smothered. The ball on the turf. Picked up by Eustace. Eustace out wide. Taken by Poole. Poole on centre wing. Hooks it back toward the centre of the ground. Taken by Jeff. He goes short. And he drops oh, very short, kick. and the mark is taken by Johnny Law. You wouldn't know by his number. I don't think their mothers would know half of these people. Well, there's the kick to Holt. Oh, good mark. I tell very you. good mark. Johnny Holt, he's he did that well. He turned himself yep. around him in air to protect himself. He's made too. an enormous difference since coming on the ground. Down to McCann. McCann marks in front of Strawn at centre-half forward. Now, it's not 15 metres. It's a long way out. 
Sorry. Long Sorry. way out with the heavy ball. Sorry, Peter, I pressed your cough button. My cough button. Thanks, Jack. I wonder what happened. I thought we'd gone off the air as we see McCann with a long driving kick. What a kick! That floated back the opposite way to the breeze. I don't know how that happened. But what a kick but against it back at a great goal. Three goals to Steve McCann and North starting to get on top. They lead by two goals. Seven goals, six, 48 to Richmond, five, six, 36. <laughs> You can get it riding, you can get it sliding, you can feel it coming on about four. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer, and the best cold beer is Vic, Vic Bitter. You can get it in a hole, or up a pole, you can get it doing nothing at all. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic, a long cold Vic. You can get it walking, you can get it talking, you can get it working a plow. Matter of fact, I got it now. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic, Victoria Bitter. Mazda believe the time has come to create. The top one tonner. The performance power one tonner. Petrol and diesel lighter top one. The sedan car comfort one tonner. Unique ton. anti vibration mounting. Mazda. The precise handling one tonner. Bigger wheelbase, more stable. The optimum hauling one tonner. Double skin, big load protection. That top one tonner. That you won't know it till you drive it. Totally versatile, fully imported, all new from Mazda. Top one tonner. One day it occurred to Peter Allen that life would be a lot easier if people had a phone around the house, not their household around the phone. Rather than have expensive fixed extensions, he thought it would be a better idea to run a wire around the house you simply snap the phone into. Peter Allen works for Phone World, Hello, a member of the James Hardy Industries Group, who Hi, also Greg. thought SuperSnap such a good idea they've made it available for all Australians. James Hardy Industries, the name behind the news, by Peter Allen. So back at the centre, Peter's given you the score, 48 to 36, North Melbourne leading, and we're around about 16 and a half minutes into the second term. North Melbourne through to wire, go forward again. Phil Crackler's there, waited for the crumb. The ball comes to turf, Jonas gets it down, German's there, nearly threw that ball out, taken by, who is this, Eustace? It is, no, it's not. I think it's Notting. Notting I spoke of before. Coming up the ground, but Greg takes the mark on the wing position being called by his teammate to go out wide that he does there's about four north players oh. out there but neither can get it yet Holt tries to tap it out and does so with some success taken by our Siri he puts it to the forward pocket and Jonas is there can't take the mark against Jep and it's very close to the boundary line but Jep doing well controls mm -hmm. the ball for a while but then James tried to give it back to him I thought but couldn't do so well, the boundary throw in good effort by Jep there taking it around the boundary line he's had an excellent game so far and you can see him there giving directions to team teammates he's a very very good player as we see German down to Phil Cracker oh look at that oh skills of cracker to Larkin to get the loose man going Larkin sidesteps swings onto the left foot the short pass was meant for cracker but it goes straight to uh, Dean Notting Notting gets it across to Strawn Strawn will go wide here's a chance for Richmond as it's taken there by Bays Bays across to Burton Burton's got no one to give it to so he hooks it back towards Jess Jess has been well covered by Glenn Didding he's got no one to give it to now he goes back to uh, James. James swings onto the left foot, beautifully smothered by Larkin. Oh, in the back against Jess. And it has to go to Larkin. A bit of a blue going on between Jess and John Law. Nothing serious as Jimmy Jess got right into uh, the back of Matthew Larkin on centre wing and the parochial North Melbourne supporters not too happy. Now, what in the right spot to get stuck into a North Melbourne player? <laughs> right here in front of the North Melbourne supporters. But there's the kick from Larkin up high. It'll come to ground, I would think. It comes to our Siri. He gets it over the top of the pack. It breaks well for uh, Cracker. Who's he going to give it to? He goes up toward McCann. He's holding Strawn out. Strength there. Told the story. But that's good football there. Geary got it out. A chance now for Holt. Holt gets it over to McCann. McCann puts it North Melbourne combining against the breeze, which is a strange thing we've spoken of before. 
North Melbourne 8-6, Richmond 5-6, Geron 7's big lead. Well, full marks to North Melbourne. Uh, they were in trouble early against Richmond. They've fought back hard, and uh, the Tigers finding it very difficult up at the forward line without Roach in the side as a spearhead. Pickering's their only forward really doing well. I think you'd agree, Jack. Jess has been well held up there by Glendinning, and here's a free kick at the centre bounce. Someone encroaching into the centre square. It'll go to McDonald. North really starting to play well at the moment. Down towards Hodgman. Hodgman braces himself read that beautifully and takes a mark he gets it to Johnny Holt, Holt hooks it back towards full forward, who's there? Phil Cracker, oh boy, yeah. oh, what a mark, a beautiful mark by Phil Cracker, 20 metres out from goal. Hi oh, gee, I didn't know whether he had it or not, the umpire ran across us there Peter obscured our view slightly but that was a fantastic piece of work by Phil Cracker, North Melbourne have to win this game today against Richmond to stay in the final five because they've got two very hard games coming up against Fitzroy and Hawthorne so they have to win today, and I think they realise that. Phil Cracker, 25 metres out in front. Couldn't miss it, I wouldn't think. Didn't miss it either. He puts it through for North Melbourne's ninth goal. North Melbourne 9-6, Richmond 5-6. You're on seven's big league. Well, in the first quarter, it was all Richmond. They played a terrific game. We thought the, the flags here at Arden Street are favouring the end, which Richmond is kicking in. The ball certainly floating further that end. They're kicking the ball further, but all the scoring has been done at the opposite end of the ground. Well, and, there's uh, no reason for it because the breeze is definitely favouring left of screen. That's the northern end of the ground. But Richmond are finding it very difficult, Jack, to get it past that North Melbourne half-back line. Glenn Didding holding Jess and Laws holding his opponent, uh, James. And uh, generally, North just too strong in defence. And without Roach up there to fire it, Pickering's their only forward who's doing well and they can't get it up to him at the moment. Umpire Morrow put it down, thumped out by MacDonald and kicked very high on this occasion. Greg coming on the scene with Dimitriou. The ball comes to turf, hurried out on that occasion by Crocker. Another chance for North Melbourne's Peter German. He goes goalward, it's McCann. No, he can't hold it. He comes back in the road and through it goes. Another North Melbourne goal. I was just about to say that North Melbourne have kicked six goals for the quarter. It is now seven. North Melbourne, ten goals, six, 66. Leading Richmond by 30 points, 5, 6, 36. Yes, uh, great play by McCann there. There was no doubt about that player. If he gets in front and fights for the ball, he's a terrific player. And he fought for that one. That allowed... Uh, uh, Phil Cracker to run free and he booted it off the ground through for his second goal. But the full marks to McCann wrestling down there was strong as we see McDonald too. Not unusual looking um, ruckman there in McDonald and Craig Stewart. Jimmy just had a very uh, quiet day. Oops. Oh, Burton fumbles the football. In he copped one in the back there. He had to get a free kick there. Umpire Smith and umpires Jeff Morrow doing a pretty good job keeping control of this game. Chris Burton getting a hand pass out. Jeff it appeared to be getting it down. Smith's there for north at the back with a mark by Geary. He was looking for the chance to keep going. He comes back with a hand pass. He gave it back to Burton. Who's this court? It's rolling. He's got a little pass. That's Rioli uh, getting the ball moving down toward the half forward zone. Geary awaits an ear to pick up an ear from the forward pocket. Comes around looking for Pickering but chopped off by Smith. Ross Smith, great game last week up at uh, the Sydney Cricket Ground when they needed him badly. And uh, Mickey McKenna, I was surprised he didn't start on the ground, but he's about to come on for Richmond. I'm not sure who he'll replace. Is German, caught, uh, breaks the tackle easily. Onto the left foot, Hodgman, bundled out of the way. Demetrio to Crocker. Oh, gee, they look good now. Out Oops. the lark, and oh gee, they're teaming beautifully now, North Melbourne. He was grabbed when he didn't have the football by Peter Francis. Off he goes, shrugs the tackle. A long hand pass out to Demetrio. He wants to hand pass. Now he goes for the kick. He floats it in towards goal. Strawn, no mark, kicked off the ground. And that was for a North Melbourne point. And Zaseri. that was by Asiri. Mark Asiri, the little fella down the forward pocket. So North, it's been a North Melbourne quarter by far. 10-7 North. Richmond 5-6. Strawn going out wide, finding Eustace, who gave the ball back out to Jep. Jep of Richmond coming down the wing position toward the wing on the outer side where the old gas holder used to be, but now they used to be called the gasometer wing one stage, but there's no gas holder anymore, Pete. So no. that's part of the skyline gone from North Melbourne, as will the North Melbourne Football Club. It does appear they'll be leaving this ground at the end of this year. 
So the ball tapped out again. There's a chance for McKenna. Peter told you before was coming on. He kicks down towards Jimmy Jess. He can't take the mark. It runs through past Fury toward the boundary line. Picked up by the Good Brown Low Meadows. By Fury. Glenn Denning. Beautiful shepherding by Fury there to allow Glenn Denning to come through. Now it's Egan who looks uh, clean in the uniform. Over to Francis. Francis to Anir. Anir to Pickering. He's got it. He ducks away. Oh, he loses it as he was tackled beautifully. It's punched away over to Fury. That was by Ross Smith. Over the line it goes. I thought Pickering was going to get clear and have a shot, but that late tackle just caught him. He was dispossessed of the ball, and it's in the forward pocket as Jess. Or oh, cop one in the back. He must get a free kick. Yes. No doubt, umpire Morrow, I agree with that entirely, as uh, Donald McDonald jumps straight into the back of Jess, 20 metres out directly in front. Well, North Melbourne on 10-7, Richmond on 5 goal 6 with Jess. He will change the scoreboard here. He's only 20 metres out from goal, should kick the goal, and should bring Richmond up to 6-6. Well, we'll wait and see. The ball is slippery, but he should kick the goal, really. Jimmy Jess. He puts it through. So Richmond now, 6-6 in answer to North Melbourne's 10-7. You're on Sevens Big League in the second term of the game at Arden Street, North Melbourne and Richmond. And North Melbourne coming away convincing winners to score by 50 points. McCann got five goals for the Kangaroos and for Richmond, Pickering three and Crebin got two. Looking at the stats on the match, North Melbourne having 44 more kicks and Richmond, they had 66 more handballs. Now checking the league ladder. As it stands after round 20, we'll check next week's games. First of all, and Geelong and Richmond out at BFL Park. Hawthorne play Carlton in a game that should and very possibly will decide the double chance. North Melbourne play Fitzroy. Collingwood play Footscray. Essendon play St Kilda. And the match on Sunday, August the 25th, is the Sydney Swans versus Melbourne. That's the, that's the second last game in Sydney for this year. The final game of the season will be the Bombers and the Swans at the SCG uh, a couple of weeks from now. Now let's check the league ladder if we possibly can. There it is. Essendon, a pretty well consolidated first spot. Even if they lose the remaining two matches, their percentage is still very handy. Putscray have pretty well sewn up second two with 60 points. Carlton and Hawthorne, as I mentioned, to play next week. And North Melbourne still in the five with a percentage of just over the 100 mark. Geelong can get in, but it now seems unlikely. Collingwood can't make the five from Fitzroy, Richmond, Melbourne, the Sydney Swans and St Kilda. And that's how they stand after round 20. Two rounds to go to complete season 1985 and then the finals. And let's hope we indeed have some fine weather before then to let the grounds dry up. Good win uh, to Footscray today, certainly the highlight of the round over Hawthorne at the Western Oval, the Bulldogs scoring by five points. And that just about wraps it up for Sevens Big League tonight. Um, don't forget the Army Reserve Cup tomorrow, live and exclusive to Seven Sport from a quarter past two at the Lake Oval. Hope to see you down there. Okay, takes us out from Sevens Big League. If your team won today, good night to you all.